life is because the enemy want to distract you from where you're about to go. Yay! But somebody ought to just get excited and tell your enemy, say, listen here, where I'm going is greater than where I've been. And where I've been has been preparing me for where I'm about to go. Because What's up, Donald? Donald, oh. Donald Taylor, you from, you from Texas? Or you from Louisiana? What's up, everybody? Listen, I decided to come back and just discuss again because I had an episode today. It wasn't a bad episode. It was a very good episode. I didn't have a bad episode. I had a very good episode today. But I decided to come back and have a conversation with you guys about my episode that I had. <clears throat> so today, um, um, today, I wind up going to... Um, pick up a customer right and when I went to pick them up there was a state of confusion going on and and it is immediately like right after I did my this morning my live this morning soon as I did my live this morning I wind up getting this ping to go to Douglasville and I went to Douglasville Georgia and I got there and there was a moment right so uh, and, and it was yeah it was a real moment it was a lit moment and you know i oftentimes hear a lot of uh drivers say man have you ever had one of those lit moments and i always would say no i never had one but today i finally had me a lit moment right and so the uh customers putting everything inside of the car and stuff and closed up and another individual drove up and saw that they was removing their stuff from uh, the property so uh when he closed the trunk i backed the car out purposely let me just back about these people's driveway because I don't want to be involved in anything that makes me have to get involved, right? So, out of nowhere, the drive, the writer said, you want your cake and eat your ice cream too. Well, listen, y'all know I had a moment, right? I had me a what moment today. And I just hit the steering wheel. I'm like, if I didn't just say that today, God, I know you just didn't set me up to have this conversation with this man and whatnot. You can't have both of them. You can't have the good and the evil at the same time. You can't have your cake and your ice cream at the same time. You can't have God and the devil at the same time. You can't have a, a bar friend and a boo. No, no, you got to pick and choose what you want and how you want you can't have them all at the same time now there got to be some changes there got to be some difference they got to be a different so i'm not going to be be very long with y'all but i have to get to you and say this it's amazing to me so today when everything went through and and you know i just start praying for the peace of god and the presence peace pastor murray said something the other day sometimes you just have to make sure you have a spiritual presence and um um, I just start praying the blood of Jesus and the peace of God. I just kept saying the blood prevailed, the peace of God. And uh, because it could have turned voluntary, voluntary, you know. And I, I just started saying the peace of God, the blood of Jesus. And I watched the peace of God come over and overtake um, the situation, right? So I had a chance uh, when he got in the car and, and he was just quiet. I said, sometime a quiet answer is the best answer to have. And the brother said, you're right about it. So halfway up down the road, he began to start talking to me. And he said, you can't have both. So I turned my live on and let him listen to the live. And the brother just teared up. He's like, man, what time? I said, 
that just happened like an hour ago. I just did this live about an hour ago. And I was only 285 and I got your ping. I said, and here we go, we here. And uh, he was just like, my God, I wish I'd heard that earlier. I wish I'd heard that earlier. And I was like, man, you would be surprised and be baffled. Uh, some of the stuff God be having me to say in the morning at how many times I run into somebody that what I just said is making a lot of sense, right? I said, you are definitely right. You cannot have you cake and your ice cream. And I began to talk to him about Ishmael and Isaac. I said, brother, I said, you got to rid the Ishmaels out of your life. If you're going to maintain and keep Isaac in your life, you got to get rid of the Ishmael. You got to remove that stuff that doesn't make any sense. That stuff that is debauchery, that stuff that's unhealthy, that stuff that's ungodly, that stuff is that's, unfors that's forsake, gonna forsaken, going to forsake you and make you walk in abandonment. You have to forget those things. And um, so uh, he was talking, I said, and, and, and with all that, you got to get to know the Lord. You got to get in to know God and give a chance to walk in the presence of God and walk in the abundance of God so that you can recognize and know what it is that the Father is requiring of you in your life. I said, because if not, you're going to find yourself so discombobulated and disorientated. See, sometimes God want to move things out your way so that you can make a major sacrifice. And sometimes God get rid of the, the, the issue so that you can go and sacrifice your Isaac so that you can show God that neither one is Ishmael nor Isaac really matter to me as long as I got you and 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 um Abram knew that if I sacrifice Isaac, that God was going to allow him, go raise him up again. The reason why Abram was willing to make a sacrifice, because he knew that God was willing to restore. And, and, and some people still holding on to the Ishmael because they don't believe that God can restore them. They don't believe that God can bring them out. They don't believe that God is the, is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. They don't believe that God is the right now God, the now unto him that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you think and next, according to the power that's inside of you. And I was sharing to that brother, I said, um, you, you got to be able to know that when God is asking you to let something go, you got to let it go. And not just let it go, let it go and let it be. Some things you don't need it to fly away and fly back. Something is so unhealthy. And the words that y'all was using, the words that was coming out of, out, out of the other individual's mouth and, and, and just how you were standing there, you was ready, gauging to fight. You was ready to fight. You was ready for the wrong movement to get in your, in your, in your space. And I said, I just started praying for the peace of God. The peace of God, because I didn't want to have to be a witness with your stuff in my car. I didn't want. I said, sometimes you just got to learn to let go of the Ishmaels. You holding on to something that don't want to be held on by you. They, they act like they want to be hold on. Now, this is for somebody else that's watching me. Some people in your life act like they want you to hold on to them. But they really don't want you to hold on to them. And it's very clear that they don't want you to hold on to them. Why? It's because they see the foolishness that is going on. I'm telling you, some people want you to hold on to them. It's because they, they you give them a storyline. Some people want you to hold on to them. It's because you are the author and the finisher of their, of their creation. They want to hold on to you because you've been upgraded and they need to live. They need to bootleg in your upgrade. They need to walk in your upgrade. They need to operate in your upgrade. They need to function in your upgrade. Because they don't have enough sense to be processed and go through them. Sometimes that's family, friends, uh, homeboys, husband, wives, children. Come on. Uh, 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 churches, business, jobs, employees. People will hold on to you because of your upgrade. And God is trying to get you to a place where you can function in the things that God wants you to function in. Now, I don't know about some of y'all, but today is the day that God won't need you to function and be operable in the things that he's requiring for you. Listen, today, are y'all hearing me? Today is the day that you walk in the newness of God. And you get rid of this Ishmael. You, you move this Ishmael out of the way. You let this Ishmael know, no, I won't have time for that today. Not, not today, not today. I don't, I don't have time for that. No, 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 no. I don't have time for it. Not today. 
Come on, tell your neighbor, I don't have time for that today. I need to do what it is that the Father is requiring and is calling for me to do. I need to be able to function in the thing that God wants me to function in. By getting rid of, getting rid of the problematic things. Ishmael and Isaac would never get along. Ishmael and Isaac is two type of people. One was out of wedlock and the other one was, was, was from an Egyptian slave. Slave and Egyptian. That's two mentalities right there. You got to make sure that you allow people what you recognize was an Ishmael in your life. Recognize what is an Ishmael. Recognize those Ishmaels in your life, those Ishmaelites. And because the Ishmaelites are today, they are the descendants, uh, the Muslim are the descendant of Ishmael. And because the Muslims are the descendants of Ishmael, they backlash to Ishmael. Today, we have this holy war of Muslim crying the holy war against Christians. They were never meant to be because it's two different mindsets. It's two different mindsets. Come on. Are y'all catching it? There's two different mindsets. You got to know how to function. You got to know how to operate in the things that God wants you to operate into. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, today, if you want to get to, if you, if, if you want to get to, if you want to get to your Isaac, to your Abraham moment, you got to rid that, that, that Ishmael. If you want to, if you want to stay focused and stay strong on your Abraham, in your Abraham moment, you got to get rid of the Ishmaels and that Ishmael can be an attitude. So don't take it and say, oh, Pastor Juan told me to get rid of you. I didn't say that. I said, get rid of your Ishmael. I figured you was going to get lost right there. I figured you booger bears was going to get lost right there. But you know what? I'm going to write him a letter and I'm going to tell him how I feel. I said earlier that an Ishmael can be a mother, father, sister, brother, auntie, uncle, or cousin. But remember, it's your Ishmael. What was Ishmael? What was Ishmael? Huh? What was Ishmael? Ishmael was the creation of, Ad, of, Ab, of Abraham because he didn't want to wait on God. He didn't want to function in God's timing. He did what he wanted to do. He created Ishmael. So sometime you all can create the Ishmael in your family by putting them in places where they don't belong. I didn't say get rid of your family. I said get rid of your Ishmael. So if your if your Ishmael have became your family, then you need to change your how you look at family. Let them be family, not the Ishmael, because Ishmael and Isaac don't get along. Ishmael and Isaac don't get along. Just like Esau and Jacob had an issue, they had a confrontation because of birthrights. You are living in today with, with competition with family members because of a birthright. God have invested something in you that she, he never invested in none of your other siblings. God have invested leadership role in his, for his kingdom in you that he never invested in none of your family members. And because they don't understand your kingdom role, your leadership role in the kingdom, they're judging you and dogging you out and becoming dogma because the mere fact you're called to salvation and they're called to salvation, but you're called to salvation so that you can lead. They're called to salvation so they can follow. And that's why they have an issue because regardless of what Ishmael was going to have to follow Isaac. And therefore God knew that Ishmael was not going to want to follow Isaac because in Ishmael's mind, I'm the oldest. In Ishmael's mind, I, I have the spirit of Egypt and the, the spirit of a slave mother. My mother didn't ask for this. My mother didn't sign up for this. My mother didn't this. So you, you, you've been given uh, this opportunity. My mother been given this opportunity and now y'all going to put me on the back burner? Oh, H-E-2 hockey sticks. No, I want to be the oldest. I want my oldest right because I am the oldest. And by right, Ishmael is the oldest. But God said, you're not the oldest in my eyes because I'm a sovereign God. God said, you're not the oldest in, in, in how, in my, in, 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 my, uh, in my opinion, in my state of being, in my sovereignty. The oldest is Isaac. That's who I ordained. A lot of us are ordaining stuff. A lot of us are ordaining people to be the, be the God's choice. And it's not the God's choice. And I've learned that. I have suffered that many years. You know, I have to stop. So I'm, I'm around people that's moving and walking. So I have to check and see who's doing what. So I don't have to become volatile. So I don't have to become a looter and a, and a, and a riot. Since that spirit is already in the earth and in the land. 
I, I suffer that a lot. I, I, I suffer with being with, when I say suffer with it, I suffer with people not accepting me being what God called me to be to them. I didn't sign up for it. I didn't choose, uh, I wanted to be a model. I wanted to travel the world. I was going to be a Christian because I did love God. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to model. I wanted to, to live a wonderful life. I just wanted, but God saw fit that he wanted me to lead people. I didn't sign up to lead people. I didn't wake up and I didn't come out of my mother's womb or my father's story uh, growing and say, oh, I'm going to be a leader. I didn't, I didn't sign up for that. I have my own life. I had a life uh, planned out for me. But I had to get rid of Ishmael, which was my own life. It was the, the decisions. Ishmael was my Ishmael. was my decisions. What I wanted to do, I had to rid those things so that God can be effective and God can be operable in my life. That God can get glory out of my life. So yes, there's a lot of people, a lot of us leaders that woke up, we didn't sign up for leadership. We just woke up and the, the deposit was on our life, the call was on our life, the oil was on our life, the mantle was on our life, people prophesied to us, and here we are. There's some people God put me in their life and, and I, don't, I don't walk in the full benefits of why I'm there. I have to share my, I have to share, and this is gonna sound selfish, or inconsiderate but when God put people in people's life that person that God put in your life should not have to share with the demonic realms of your life um, if you come in my life as my sister you come in my life as my brother I'm very private as a person anyway I'm sister Phyllis is on the line and she's watching me now me and her live together for years she had to come sometime in my room and say I'll walk in house and don't speak it's not that I'm mad. It's not that I don't like you. It's not that she did me nothing. You did. You, you woke up this morning, so you did have a good morning. I need to tell you that. You know, that's just me. I, when I was working on my jobs, I didn't walk in and say good morning. How y'all doing? I said, hey y'all, how y'all doing? All right, then go straight to my desk because I had a job to do. I, I'm I'm a very private person, but my my coworkers knew that if they needed to have uh if they needed to have a moment with me, oh one is touchable, one is reachable. Oh, uh, oh, go, go to one with that. Well, uh, he said something to do for me. Go to him. He'll listen to you. And when people come to my desk, used to come to my desk and say, "Hey, oh, Juan, you know me and you was going through, you know, something you said and kind of offended." And I was, oh my God, I didn't mean to offend you. I said I wouldn't even talking about you. I said I'm sorry that my projection was wrong, or maybe my, uh, maybe my 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 eye contact was at you and it really wasn't. I said I do apologize about that, and I'm gonna work on doing that better. And I sat down in my desk and continued doing my work. I didn't get up and make it an issue. You know why? Because being a private person, those things like that doesn't bother me. Because when I get off that job, I'm going home. You're not following me home. I'm going home. I'm going to my domain, to my domicile, where I live at, where I rest and rule it by that. Same thing with, um, with a lot of other things. So um, I, I suffered a lot. You know, God called me to be a brother to some people. And um, they want, when, when they're in a battle, I'm good to be a brother. When, when, when they need prayers, I'm good to be a brother. But when they need a correction, I need to mind my business. God have called me to be spiritual guidance to a lot of people. And if I say something, it's going to be a, re, a, a, a rebuke, a, I mean, a rebuttal, a, a rebuttal about it. Or it, it's going to be, well, I, I don't know. Or you'll go find somebody else. So those things have become like us. And I had to learn that. Because why? If I don't learn how to deal with that Ishmael and understand and recognize the spirit of Ishmael from the spirit of, of the spirit of um of Isaac, then what happens is I'll start treating Isaac like an Ishmael and treating Ishmael like I'm supposed to be treating Isaac. So that's why I'm sharing with you in this in this next minute that I have with you, that you got to maintain the structure, maintain the structure, maintain the oil of God, maintain the control, maintain it, May know the difference, know what is an Isaac and know what is an Ishmael. Know that Isaac gonna love you, Isaac's gonna care about you, Isaac's gonna go the extra way, Ishmael's gonna want his benefits. Ishmael is gonna want his benefits. Don't make the, the rich man had two sons and one son stayed home with him, but the other son went living his righteous living. But when all his stuff was gone, he came back home because he said, I know I, I got my father have hired servants living better than me. I don't want to go back and be a son. I just want to be a servant. And what happens is the father saw his son and out of emotion, out of love and out, out of fatherhood, he grabbed a hold of his son and he thought about uh, banqueting and all of that stuff. 
and there were time, or it could have been a possibility, a strong possibility, that the son that stayed, that did not get celebrated like the one that left. Understand that, and what happens, you can create an Ishmael and an Isaac mentality. And you can create an Ishmael mentality in an Isaac. And I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen in my own personal life where there's times that um, I didn't mean a certain thing or there was time that I was being a father or it's time I was just being a pastor and I know what I was doing was right and there was people in my life that didn't understand it and, and because I don't explain myself when I'm doing something, especially if God tell me to do something. Let me tell you something. If God tell me to do something, I'm not about to explain to you and nobody else why I'm doing that. I'm just not. I'm just not going to do that. Because I didn't sow that in leadership. When my leaders told me, oh, the Lord is telling us to relocate. All right, what do we need to do? This is what I need y'all to do. I, we did it. So if I didn't sow that, I don't need a millennial. I don't need a just coming up Christian. I don't need somebody popping up saying, well, why are we doing that? Don't ask me why, because why is before Z. If you don't want to participate, just don't. Don't make it an issue. Just don't participate. Lift your hand up and say, mm, I'm out of that one. I don't know nothing about it. And since I'm not going to get an explanation, I'm going to leave it alone. And why? Because I don't, ex and, and there's something I do, uh, Pam. I'm never going to ask you to explain something to me when I would not explain something to you. If you tell me God told you to move to uh, Kentucky, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm in conversation. I may say, well, wh wh what's the reason? Why are you going? And if you say, well, you know, the Lord just told me to do it. Okay, well, God told you to do it. Listen, if you need help, <clears throat> holler at me because Kentucky ain't that far. I can come down and visit you and whatever be the whatever, right? If you if you say God told you to move to California, if God say, Pam, move to California. I can just give you some suggestions of how to get around and how to live and survive and what to do. But I'm not going to stop you from doing it. I'm not going to say, well, you shouldn't do that because this. No, no. Because I don't know what God told you. And these are the creative, these the creative characters of Ishmael. Ishmael wants to be in control. Ishmael wants to be understood. Ishmael wants to be honored because he feels this way. I'm first of all, I'm born of a slave woman. I'm born of an Egyptian woman. So therefore, my mom was an Egyptian and a slave to, to, to Sarah. So hey, my daddy is 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 is, is, is Abraham. So I should have some kind of blessing. I should have some kind of lynch. I should have some kind of honor. Give me. And it's always a confrontation. Ishmael is very, even in, even when you watch the story and watch a video and watch and read the stories, watch dramatize how Ishmael began to be very hard on Isaac. And I've been very rough because he realized the shine is all on Isaac now. And we find that in our families, in our children, when children have different age gaps and whatnot, you find that. You, 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 you'll find that. There's a lot of times I told I told my mother this a lot of times, even in front of my siblings. If you'd have stopped and just had me, me, you wouldn't have all these problems. We wouldn't, you wouldn't have all these problems. And my mother said, but I'm, I'm grateful of all my kids. I said, yes, you are, but you complained about them all too. And I'm tired of you complaining to them to me. Because that's your Ishmael. They're not mine. They're, they're my siblings. They're not my Ishmael. That's your Ishmael. And if you had stopped just right here with me and you, we've been living happy ever together. You'd be in your room. I'd be in my other room. And it is what it is. And we move on. And we've been living happy go look. I love my sisters, but I've turned to my mother many times. Many times. I've turned to my sister. You mean it? You don't wish I was. I said, now that you're here, I'm glad you're here. But before, no, I didn't want you to be here. So I know that exists. See, I'm very transparent. I know that stuff exists. I know it, ex it exists in families. I used to say it all the time to my mom. You should just stop that me. Especially when my mom be telling me, I don't understand why they, you know, I don't understand this one, I don't understand that. And I always say, well, mama, if you had only stopped at me. And sometimes she want to say, I know my mama want to say sometimes, ah, yeah, I should have just stopped at you. Because well, who don't give my mama the blues is me. I don't do all that. No, I don't believe in the disrespect of parents. I don't believe a parent being disrespected. I don't believe that you use profanity while you're talking to your parents. I don't believe none of that. I don't believe it. Mama, if you just stopped at me. It just been me and you. And as you see, I'm the same. I'm this person now. I've been that person then. And you just listen. Let's go shop. Go to the mall. Shop. Live wonderful life. Me and you travel all over the world till you close your eyes. It's just been me and you. But now you can't do that because you got it all. And I do love my siblings. And my mother loved all of us. My mother do love all of them. But I'm just telling you, some those things do happen in in family. As well as in my family, when my grandmother was raising me and, and all my grandfather and my aunt had to take care of me and watch me, 
They didn't want to watch me all the time. They did not want to watch me. They were like, give him back to his mama. Give him to his daddy. That's not our child. Why we had Ishmael, that Ishmael mentality? Because it's about me right now. Let me have my shine. Give it to me. And we find that a lot in leadership, bro. And among leaders, everybody want this shine. Everybody want this shine. Listen, I got to get up out of here because I got to pick up somebody at 1230. And um, so I love each and every one of you. I want to give you some true. Um, Mika said, Tamika said, my son told you that. Yes. Yes. I I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, I hear parents say that a lot. I, I hear parents even in my car. Tell me, you know, my, my, my daughter, such a, my daughter told me, mama, if you just only had me, if you just stopped at me, we wouldn't have the rest of all this issue. And she said, and I have a parent say, you know, sometimes I really do wish I, I, I don't wish I stop, but I do think about that because she doesn't give me anything. She's the one that helps me. She's the one that does everything I need. She keeps the family together and the rest of them, they got their own agendas, their own life, and they act as if me and her don't exist. And I said, wow. And that's sometimes that the, the boy would say that, that oldest boy would say that, you know? So those things do happen, but I do love my siblings. I do love my siblings and stuff and whatnot, but it is, it is what it is, right? So listen, I love each and every one of you. Amen, I do. I love each and every one of you and I do love my sisters and my brothers. I love them. I love them crazy as all I do is, but I love them and I give them their space because they are, they are Ishmael's and I'm Isaac. So I give them their space. You go and do your Ishmael and all Ishmael and Ishmael's do, do it. I'm gonna stay over here and do what Isaac do. And that's staying with faith, staying with the faith of God. I love each and every one. You stay with God. Don't look down on anybody unless you have the intention of picking them up. And another thing, if you miss me or if you miss me on Monday, know I got my rapture clothes on. I'm going to be living rapture ready. All right. God bless you. And God keep you as my prayer.